Hi, everybody. Um, this is, I'm Tessa, and this is Dr. Daniel Scora. And we are so excited to be here again for another edition of Facebook Live Friday. And today is Doc Talk. And we are talking um, with Dr. Scora about all things infertility. So start giving us your questions. He would love to be put on the spot. Um, so if you would just start by telling us a little bit about yourself, because you are our newest REI. My name is Daniel Scora. Hi. Um, I just joined the practice in August. Uh, before here, um, I've lived all over the country. Uh, before here, I was in Vermont for fellowship and before that in Washington, D.C. for a residency training as well as working as faculty at GW. Um, I grew up mostly in New Orleans um, and I've lived all over the country. So um, I'm really excited to be in Texas now where I have family um, in the warm weather um, compared especially up in the Northeast, which I'm sure hopefully some of you will be watching up there as well. Uh, I'm sorry if you're so storm in November. <laughs> <laughs> it's I, 70 here today. I wish they'd send some of that snow down here. No, no, that's not why I moved here. <laughs> <laughs> we need to go sledding. Go to, Col go to Colorado for that. And so, you know, next week is obviously Thanksgiving and trying to conceive is such a difficult journey for anybody, but especially with the holidays, do you have any tips for anyone who may be watching about kind of getting through the next five or six weeks and, yeah. and you, know. you know I majored in psychology in college so I know that this part of the year can be very difficult for, for people especially people who suffered from depression you know a lot of emotional baggage goes along with infertility as well and I would say that my advice to patients who struggle with this time of year who deal with you know families who have expectations and things like that is just to try to enjoy for the next six weeks. You know, enjoy those those good meals, enjoy the friends and the family, and try to kind of relax and not be anxious. Because I've seen so many couples who, you know, they give up finally and then they get pregnant the next month. So I would say, you know, trying to really relieve that anxiety, enjoy yourself, do whatever you need to do to kind of relax as much as you can with that time off, I think will be great for your fertility journey. Um, so Speaking about just a little bit about psychology, can you kind of, because that is such an important component to infertility and kind of coming to see a fertility specialist. And um, so how do you kind of utilize your experience with that in talking to your patients and kind of treating the whole mind body? Well, for me, it's more about, you know, communication, mostly. You know, I've seen hundreds of, you know, in my, in my training, et cetera, I've seen hundreds of patients and couples, especially. Um, throughout that entire time and what i've noticed is generally is the communication that breaks down that leads to problems among couples and you know i've seen infertility patients break up and what i tell all my new infertility patients when i see them is this is an emotional journey we're all on it together we're working together this is not one person's fault this is a team sport i am not the leader of the team i'm just guiding you on your journey of this infertility process right so we, what most important to me is that everyone acts differently when it, when it relates to the psychology of but talking to each other, making sure everyone is on the same page is the most important thing for a really strong couple and journey together. I think that's, I think that's so important to kind of pound home is it's not one person's fault because at any given time, like one of the things that we talk about in our seminars is men and women contribute equally to infertility. And that's such a big um, myth and misconception is that it's always the woman that's broken. Because I know that for me, I was the one that was broken. My husband, like, I remember vividly the day he came home from his semen analysis. Sorry, honey. And he was like, oh, I have super sperm. And I was like, oh, yay for you. And, it, you know, it was for me, but um, it is very easily could have gone the other direction. It could have been him. And, and I have friends where, you know, the woman was perfectly healthy and it, it was the man's issue. And, and I think so. That's just something that's really, really important for everyone to understand is, it could be anything or it could be a combination of both. And it's, it's everybody is on the same field at the end of the day. Everybody just That's wants right. to take them a baby. Exactly. And you know, men and women uh, treat infertility very differently. And that's something I also talk about with my patients as well. Men are much more oriented towards trying to fix things. And unfortunately, this is not something that you can just fix, right? So, um, and women, as Tessa was saying, often think even before any testing is done that it's their fault mm -hmm. and they blame themselves for everything, et cetera, even though it might not be, we might not have to find any reason at all for their infertility. So, you know, I think it's really important to go at it as a team, as a couple, we're working on this together. It doesn't matter what they find. We're going to work on this together and make a solution, hopefully. 
So you've been in Texas now for, you moved here in August. So what has been a couple of the best experiences so far about being here? Oh, wow. Well, I think uh, the weather, although October was really unfortunate here. I've heard that that's normally like the best time of year <laughs> and it was raining the entire month, which was terrible. Um, but probably um, being with my family, uh, my brother and his family are here and he has two uh, small uh, kids, my nephews, um, and able to spend more time with them and being a part of their lives has really been great for me. Um, I got a new little puppy. <laughs> and I really I, enjoy him. I wish you had, you could like show everybody. Maybe we'll post dog. to the Facebook yeah. Live a picture of my yeah. dog. He's, so um, he's really cute and he's, uh, he'll have to wake up earlier now. It's <laughs> not the best, but. Um, it's preparing you for fatherhood. I guess. Eventually, yeah. when you get there. <laughs> exactly. Um, what else? I, you know, I think just getting to know people, getting to know the community, um, getting to know my practice and getting comfortable in life has just been a great experience. I love the barbecue. Um, I went to the state fair, which was really interesting and a good experience <laughs> for me. Although it was very, you know, I went to medical school in Minnesota and it was actually very similar to the Minnesota state fair um, in a lot of ways, minus the giant cowboy waving at you and talking to you. So, Big tux? Yeah, that was pretty cool, actually. Yeah. I thought that was really amazing. Did you get a selfie with the tux? Oh, yeah. Oh, I totally missed it. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll post that to you. Um, Please, questions. Right, have. right. Just as a reminder, um, my name is Tessa, and this is Dr. Daniel Scora. So please feel free to post any questions that you may have. Um, Dr. Scora will be sitting with us until 12, and then he has patients. So um, feel free to ask anything that you would like. Um, so right now, I was going to ask you, so your morning, What? tell us about your morning so oh, well, far. It's been a busy morning. Um, I did three egg retrievals this morning, um, and after that, I uh, did new uh, new patient intakes um, with uh, uh, new patients who are planning their journey with a gestational carrier and an egg donor. So, you know, we do the full range of fertility services here at Fertility Specialists of Texas. We do anywhere from uh, same sex to heterosexual couples and all their infertility needs, and, and um, we. Um, our full service here, which is great. Um, you know, sometimes other places in the country, it's not as easy to be able to offer all those services to everyone. So it's nice that we have such a complete um, ability to do right. services here. And kind of speaking about that, we actually spent the weekend in New York City. We were attending um, men having babies. And um, so that's, that's one thing that's I think is so important to kind of share with everybody is to really drive that home is that we are, um, kind of our belief here at Fertility Specialists is we fully believe and support the idea that anyone who wants to be a parent should have every option and opportunity to make that happen. And that's one of the amazing things about Fertility Specialists of Texas. And when we did go to men having babies and we talked with future fathers all weekend about how we can help them um, have that baby of their dreams. And um, I think that was just an amazing experience. And what was, what was your first how did you think the conference went? I thought it was amazing, you know, to have such a breadth of information and providers available for these people to talk to and um, kind of almost like, you know, having a huge conference of people who are there just to help them with their journeys. I think it's just, it was just really empowering and, and fascinating and meeting people who are really, you know, some of them are at their beginning of their stages of thinking about possibly having a baby, some people who are ready to start next month, you know, so it's, it's a very, overwhelming yeah. process. Right. There's a lot that goes on with having with two men having a baby. Uh, <laughs> but making, you know, talking to them about every aspect of that journey, I thought was um, really fascinating to listen to as well as to be a part of. Right. And we've really kept you busy since you started. You've been um, on the news several times and um, we are a very proud sponsor of the local organization Rainbow Roundup. And I think one of the first events we had you at was their annual birthday party. So we got to connect and that is an amazing organization for LGBT families in the Dallas Fort Worth area. And, and if, if that kind of is something you're interested in, we really recommend that you look into them. Kim Cantor is the founder and she's amazing. Um, and she will just welcome you with open arms. And then we also attended Black Tie Dinner mm -hmm. um, a couple of weekends ago and saw you in your fancy bow tie. And um, and then in the spring, we are very involved with Resolve. So we'll get you out there and, and walking the 5K or the 3K. I can't remember the K, some kind of K, um, for the Resolve Walk during National Infertility Awareness Week, which that's another amazing organization, support groups all over the country. And because really one thing that's so important is just to remember that you're not in this alone. You know, there is one in eight couples in the United States suffer with infertility. And 
there is still so much silence um, and secrecy that goes around this. But one great thing that came, came out last week was that Michelle Obama talking about that she conceived her daughters through IVF. Yeah. And I thought that was huge to kind of hear such a profound um, leader kind of talk about her experience in that respect. Yeah, so. I, agree. I think any you know visibility from important figures in our community is really important to, you know, to remove that stigma. For so many years, women especially have had such stigma associated with infertility and they're afraid to come and see a doctor, they're afraid to say anything. And I think the more and more that we see people coming forward and saying, you know, I struggled with infertility, you know, it is something that we can overcome, but you just need to, you know, act upon it. I think it's really important for people to, you know, not be afraid that first visit you're not committing to anything, right? You're just starting, in, you know, starting a discovery, right? We're looking, we're figuring out what's going on. And, you know, if you are under the age of 35 and it's taking you over a year to get pregnant, or if you're over the age of 35 and it's been six months and you haven't gotten pregnant, that's the indication to come and see a doctor like me. Or you can go and see your OBGYN also to start that work up as well. Um, but it sh you should be able to get pregnant by that amount of time if, so if everything is working properly. So, you know, I think it's really important um, people like Michelle Obama coming forward and just, you know, giving voice to the thousands, if not millions of people who right. struggle with infertility. Right. Absolutely. Um, and just really quickly, I think we may be having issues because we're not seeing anything show up over here. So if you are posting questions and this is, a, we have a new computer. So if this is the first time, if you're posting and we're not seeing it, um, we can always respond later. But just really quickly, I want to take a minute. Um, our last free fertility seminar is happening on December 4th in our Frisco office with Dr. Rebecca Chilvers, and we would love to save you a seat for that. And then also Dr. Daniel Scora, who we're sitting with right now, is having an LGBT-specific seminar on December 11th in our Dallas office. And you can find all of that information on our website, and we would love to save you a seat for that. And, you know, like he said, it's just starting the conversation. It is a free opportunity to kind of get those questions answered, meet some of our staff. If you are a female, we offer a free AMH screening. And if you could kind of tell us a little bit about what the AMH screening actually is. Sure. Be awesome. First, I want to say hi to my family up in University of Vermont from Fellowship. I know they're watching hi. right now. Oh, hi, yeah. guys. We are. <laughs> we are missing some stuff over here. Yeah, so I opened it up on my cell oh. phone, so we can <laughs> hopefully figure out what's going on. But, um, sorry, AMH. Yes. What that is. Okay. Yes. So back in the, in the older days of fertility, we used to look at day three lab. You'll often see online that they're going to want you to come in. Hi, Joe. <laughs> They're going to want you to come in and um, ask about uh, have your blood drawn on the day three of your uh, of your menstrual cycle, and um, that was back in the day used to give us an idea of ovarian reserve. In other words, what how many eggs are left in a very kind of broad sense. So, um, as women become older, unfortunately, women are born with all the eggs they're going to have for their entire lives, and every month. Um, their ovaries produce, your ovaries produce a group of follicles, and your brain produces enough hormone to make one of those follicles grow and populate, generally, if you are ovulatory. The rest of those follicles die off. So you don't just lose one egg a, a month, you lose quite a few, okay? So by looking at the, those hormone levels, that hormone level that we're looking at is how, is how strongly your brain is telling your ovary to produce that follicle. And as you get older, there are fewer follicles. It needs more of that hormone to be able to produce that one follicle. So this is just a little piece of the whole big picture, but yeah. it's something that we'd like to offer to our attendees at the seminar. It's just a little piece of the information just to kind of get you started. And it, it's just something that you can take with you and it's free. And you know, everyone kind of talks about the cost of infertility, which is why it's so important to us to offer these free seminars to kind of get some of those questions answered for you and to give you this free screening. And I love that people keep telling you to smile. <laughs> Um, let's say hi to Alma. And I forgot to actually Alicia. answer the question that oh, Tessa yes, asked yes, me. Sorry. So AMH um, is a newer test that came out in the last 10 years. So throughout the cycle, your AMH level, which is another form of looking at that same exact thing of how many kind of eggs are left or your ovarian reserve, um, is the same throughout the month. So we can do that test any time of right. the month and it will be the same. So what's nice about that is you don't have to necessarily come in on the third day of your period and we can have an idea before, no matter when you come and see. Right. And we do have a question from Quisha. Hey, Quisha. She says, I'm overweight. Is it best to lose weight before trying in vitro fertilization? Hi, Sunshine. 
So um, to answer that question, it, it varies. It depends on how overweight you are. Uh, but generally, yes, it is a good idea to optimize your weight as much as possible before doing any fertility treatments. First of all, you'll require less um, medicine to get you to produce those eggs for IVF, which saves you money and also is um, less harmful, not necessarily harmful, but, but just requires less treatment in general. Second, secondarily, there have been studies that show that women who are overweight have a poor pregnancy outcome and pregnancy rates. So the more weight you can use, lose, the more you can optimize your weight before doing any fertility treatment will increase your chance of success. So I really do encourage you to lose weight. As someone who personally lost a lot of weight in the past, um, I know it's a really difficult journey to start, but anything you can do to optimize your weight, even if that means you know, 10, 20 pounds is a fantastic start towards making this a much more feasible option for you. And speaking personally as well, um, when I was struggling um, for infertil with infertility for three years, that was that was a thing for me as well. I had um, stage four endometriosis, I had PCOS, um, and I was also overweight. And one of the things that I did right before I started my um, first round of Clomid is I did I lost forty pounds, and I really feel like that was a huge contributor to the success of um, that first cycle, and was able to conceive my son Cooper. And I know it's a struggle. I know, especially when you're already just kind of struggling so much with just trying to get pregnant, that's the last thing that you want to think of. Because anyone on any given day who struggles with, with weight, that's a huge mental um, drain on you as well. But then to add infertility to it, it's just an, it's a nasty little, little beast. And it's cyclical. Often they work right. off of each other as well. So, you know, being overweight can cause the infertility. And then the infertility compounds your set, like depression and things like that, that lead to you eating more and becoming right. more overweight. So, you know, it's a cycle that we hope to break also. And if, if that's something you need to discuss, you know, we have people that we can refer you to as well that can help in your weight loss journey as well. And, you know, sometimes people need surgical um, assistance as well, which is fantastic, you know, because in the end, what we want is a healthy mom and healthy baby, right? right? So in order to get the healthy mom and the healthy baby, sometimes we need to, you know, take drastic action, which I think, you know, some people, if you're, if you are, are young enough is a great stepping stone towards having starting your family. Right. Absolutely. Um, thank you, Quisha. We would love to see you in the office. And hi, Nella. Um, Sunshine, if you have any questions or if anyone else has questions, please ping them. They are not showing up on the laptop, but they are on Dr. M. Scores, um phone. So <laughs> sorry about that technical difficulties. But um, anyway, let's see. Um, I'm wanting to see if anyone else has Hi, Laura. Some questions. Hi, Laura. <laughs> Hi, Diana. Um, I just forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> Facebook Live. Who knows what's going to happen? Right? It's all organic. <laughs> and um, can you talk a little bit about um, <laughs> IUI versus IVF? Yeah. And kind of do you, and what you would start with if someone comes in and says, I'm, I'm just getting started. I've been struggling for a year. Mm -hmm. I'm 35. And kind of walk us through that. Yeah. So a person comes in, you know, struggling for a year, as you were saying, 35. We start with our initial workup. So it includes that blood work we talked about earlier. It includes some an ultrasound generally. We do an assessment of the patient's tube, tubes to make sure their fallopian tubes are open um, and kind of come up with an idea of what might be causing the problem. Semen analysis of the partner, if the partner's a male, um, and we move forward from there. So we come together with an idea of what's going on, and then sometimes we'll recommend intrauterine insemination, or IUI, as Tessa was saying, or IVF. Now, generally, I think of fertility as a uh, fertility, infertility treatments as a spectrum, okay? So you can start with really low um, levels of medical treatment compared to IVF, which is really high level of medical treatment, right? A lot of medicines, injections, a retrieval, all those kinds of things, um, and then embryology and a Petri dish, and then placing the embryo back in the uterus. So that's like the most complex, even if you include genetic testing and all of that thing that we do as fertility doctors. Now, UI, however, is often used on patients who A, don't ovulate, B, have unexplained infertility, a somewhat low semen analysis, a uh, sperm count sometimes can be helped by doing an intrauterine insemination. So we will often will give you a medication, a pill, sometimes a couple of injections also to help promote growth of those follicles. And then we'll have you trigger ovulation and you'll come in 36 hours later, your partner will give a sperm sample, will wash that sperm and place it into the uterus. So what it does is it overcomes the cervix, which sometimes you know, siphons off quite a bit of sperm naturally. So we kind of overcome that 
and then also gives a head start to the sperm towards the egg. And that's in the fallopian tube, hopefully, at that point. So it, inc it can increase your rate of pregnancy um, if you're infertile from, you know, 2 to 5% up to hopefully 20%, which is the natural, you know, 30-year-old couple, fertile couple should, be get, should get pregnant about 25% of the time that they try per month. So one of the things, we, we had a free fertility seminar on Tuesday with Dr. Satine Patel, and one of the things that came up was, um, you know, my husband is really resistant. He doesn't want to come in. So if there is anybody who wants to come in for that initial, because it is a big step to go from trying at home to taking the first step and calling because sometimes it's almost admitting that there's a problem. Mm -hmm. um, so how important is it to come in with your partner versus just coming in alone? Or does it, I mean, does that matter? It doesn't necessarily matter. I always do encourage people to come in as a couple because as I said before, you know, this is a team sport. This is not one person trying, sometimes it is, but it's not generally when people come in because they think they're infertile, it's because they have a, a partner that they've been trying to get pregnant with, right? So. I view it as more of a team sport. And also it's important for everyone to have all the information. Don't consider this to be someone's fault, nothing like that. Um, but you can come in by yourself if you want to start off that way. And I encourage women to, especially to, you know, be independent and do that if that's what they want. You know, it's your body and it's up to you to decide what you want to do with your body. So I really do encourage that if that even means egg freezing and things like that as well, which we can talk about later. Mm. But um, yeah, we can do the initial workup without, a partner, um, as I said, doing the blood work, the ultrasound, the tubal assessment, things like that. But in the end, if we don't have a semen analysis, um, that's a piece of the puzzle that we definitely need to know about for sure. So just kind of going back, because hi, Amanda, um, we're kind of coming up towards the end of our, our chat, but um, wanted to put out there, you know, we were talking, we started the chat talking about kind of getting through the holidays and the emotional component of all of that, but wanted to and make note, if you're not familiar with the GLOW app, um, we really encourage you to do that. We are our sponsor and we're in partnership with GLOW. It's an amazing app. There's a huge, huge online support group. Um, there's, a, there's trying to conceive and then there's pregnancy and then there's new motherhood. They kind of cover the gamut of this whole journey. And um, you can find out a lot of information about us on there. They do events. And um, it's kind of one of those things, I'm sure there's a whole lot of chatter about kind of getting through the next few weeks and you can connect with other like-minded individuals on there and we would love to see you on there. And um, I personally have it on my phone and, and there's, um, the website is glowing.com. I believe I can post the, the link in, in the comments later on, but I just kind of wanted to put that out there. If you are kind of have some um, anxiety about getting through the holidays and, um, being around nieces and nephews or just the, the um, media onslaught of Santa and all of the happy children and things like that. And I've been there, I've, I've done it, I've lived that, that, and I know what it's like. So I just encourage you to kind of um, keep your tribe close, the ones that kind of support you and, and kind of understand what you're going through. And, and if you don't have that, then find it online. There's so many great resources for that. Raving and Fertility is a local support group that's amazing, that can kind of help and love you through this process wherever you are in your journey. And again, um, you know, um, please look into our seminars because that's just a great resource to connect with our physicians in a free small setting. We keep them small um, because it, it just is more conducive to a really great give and take conversation and um, get that free screening with us. And if you have any questions, please let us know. Um, we will be scheduling another one of these with Dr. Scora soon. He is very passionate and we just touched on it briefly about egg freezing. And we can just kind of wrap up with that because we are planning to do an egg freezing party in the near future. So you'll want to stay tuned for details about that. Um, hi, Chris. Um, <laughs> um, but if you can kind of tell us just a little bit about egg freezing and kind of what that is and, and how that is different than um, some of the other uh, fertility op options that we offer. Yeah, so egg freezing is a very specific um, option for patients, either A, who are undergoing cancer treatment, or B, just want to preserve their fertility. So, you know, as someone, um, I have a lot of friends from college, et cetera, who are professionals. Um, and, you know, often we spend our 20s, I can speak to this myself as well, we spend our 20s really working on our careers, getting our education, and we don't really think about growing our families and naturally humans are supposed to have their babies in their teens, right? So, um, <laughs> which yeah, is crazy. yeah, which is, you know, now in our society, it seems like, oh, I can't even imagine being 18 and having a baby, but, 
Um, but, you know, so I really view um, egg freezing, which is going through an IVF cycle and retrieving the eggs and then freezing those eggs for future use. What it really does is it provides an insurance policy on motherhood. Okay. So what it does is it freezes those eggs at the age that you retrieve them. Okay. So if you're 34, you freeze those eggs. You don't have a, you don't have a partner. You're not sure if you want to use them yet. You can use them whenever you want, really. Um, even using donor sperm in the future, if that's what you decide you want, and pl implant those embryos into the uterus later on. But it keeps that age of those eggs at 34 forever, okay? Once you reach the age of 35 and above, especially 40 and above, the genetic component of those eggs becomes worse, okay? Or the ones that are left are genetically abnormal, more likely, okay? So as a result, you're much less likely to be able to have a live birth. At the, that age, which is why a lot of patients come to see me if they're 40 plus years old, because they either have a lot of miscarriages or they're not able to become pregnant because often those eggs are abnormal genetically, unfortunately. So what this does is kind of freezes your fertility at a certain age and really frees you, frees you from the constraints of time right. and aging, which is what everyone wants, right? Not to feel a lot of women who are, you know, either single or not in the place to have a baby at the age of 35. You feel this like weight on their shoulders, right. this clock ticking behind them at all times, which often can create problems even getting into a relationship because you have that on your mind constantly. So this, I really view this, as I said before, as an insurance policy on motherhood. It allows you to enjoy your life, do what you need to do with your work, and be able to know in the back of your mind, I have these frozen somewhere. I can use them when I need to. And I think it's really empowering for women. Right. Absolutely. Um, we have one time for one more quick question from Quisha. And my circumstances are a little different. I had tubal ligation 15 years ago. I don't want it reversed. I'm interested in IVF. Yeah. So you're, you know, an ideal candidate. I don't, is, no, don't know your specific instance, you know, et cetera. But generally, um, women who go straight to IVF are the ones who have a tubal infertility issue um, because obviously that can't be, you know, without surgery can't be fixed. And IVF often leads to a much more uh, expeditious way of getting to having a baby by bypassing those tubes, by getting the eggs from the ovaries and putting the embryo back into the uterus. So yeah, that you are exactly who I would recommend IVF to, so. Absolutely, and we would love to see you in our office. So um, that's all the time that we have. Dr. Scora has patients waiting for him, but thank you everyone for joining us today. And um, any questions that pop up later, I will have Dr. Scora um, give me the answers to and um, oh, sad face. oh there's a sad <laughs> face um, but thank you guys and we hope that you have a wonderful Thanksgiving yeah. and um, blessings to everyone on their, their path to parenthood have a good weekend everyone thanks